Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. With South Africa's aerospace and defence industry raking in an annual turnover of some 19 billion rand, government has recognised how important the sector's contribution is for the economy. There are, however, challenges. Keith Campbell joins me now to discuss the opportunities and obstacles in this sector. Welcome, Keith. Keith, can you tell me more about the defence industry's contribution to South Africa and the economy? Well, as you said, it contributed 19 billion rand to the economy in 2015. Of that, 62% uh, was from exports. Uh, so it's a high export earner uh, for South Africa. It directly provides 15,000 highly skilled jobs uh, in the economy. And it is believed that studies indicate that it's responsible for the maintenance of another 45,000 highly skilled jobs elsewhere in the economy, for a total of about 60,000 skilled jobs in total. An example of, of the impact that the defence sector can have is the case of the Royal Falcon Attack helicopter, which cost about six and a quarter billion rand to develop and to manufacture. And as is well known, only 12 production examples were ever built, and it's generally seen as a commercial failure and as a very expensive one, though it's acknowledged to be an operational success. However, the sales of systems and weapons developed for and as part of the Roy Falk program within that six to quarter billion price tag uh, have brought uh, in 15 billion rand for the country for various companies uh, up to the end of 2013. So there is a real impact on the country's foreign exchange earnings. There's a real impact on the uh, employment of highly skilled people. Can you highlight some of the challenges currently facing the sector? Unfortunately, there are quite a few challenges. The biggest one is the very low local defence budget means that there is not enough money to develop new products at a rate uh, necessary to help the industry stay uh, competitive with foreign com competitors. Uh, the country, the industry is still selling uh, products who were originally de designed decades ago. Uh, we, there's a recent uh, news story about, for example, how Danel Machem uh, was uh, s ready to deliver a batch of Casper armored mine protected vehicles to another African country. Now these are the new generation 2000 Caspers launched in 2010. But the basic Casper design is nearly 40 years old. And there's going to be a point where the local industry is going to have to develop a replacement. Otherwise, they're going to lose out on, on the international market. And indeed, a number of new developments that have taken place uh, new products developed by the local industry have been developed by South African companies that are majority owned by foreign defence groups, which benefit from those foreign defence groups' global sales networks and have benefited from investment by those foreign defence groups into the new products. So local companies, uh, majority South African owned companies, that are predominantly dependent on orders from the South African National Defence Force are having a bit of a tough time at the moment. The SNDF does not have the money to invest in the range of new products and capabilities, not only that the industry needs to be developed, but that the SANDF itself needs. Uh, that is probably the biggest uh, single challenge. Uh, the obverse of that is there's an awful lot more competition out there than there was 30 years ago, 20 years ago. A lot of countries are actively developing their own defence industries now. 
There's a lot of competition in the area of mine protected vehicles. Once upon a time, there was no competition at all. Uh, there's huge competition in the area of unmanned air vehicles. Once upon a time, there were basically three countries active in the area. That was the United States, Israel, and South Africa. And Israel was the leader, uh, with the US and South Africa close behind. Now, I would not even be able to give a guess at the number of countries that are developing and pursuing UAV projects, ranging from uh, s cheap and simple to big and very sophisticated. So it's a lot more competitive. A lot of countries are seeking to develop their own defense industries. And many of them are doing so in sectors where South Africa was once undisputedly a world leader indeed. In mine protected vehicles, South Africa was once the undisputed world leader. And no, it's a lot tougher out there today. Keith, what lies ahead for defense in South Africa? Well, hopes, fears. Uh, the hope is that the government will actually implement the defense review that was approved by parliament, uh, I think, la uh, last year. Uh, that would see a slow increase in defense spending. Uh, first, the, the decline of the defense force would be halted, the situation would be stabilized, and then hopefully it would slowly grow again. That would necessarily involve the acquisition of m new, more modern systems. There are um, programs like uh, uh, the Maritime Operation Pakisa, the Blue Economy, which requires that the South African Navy acquire new patrol vessels to patrol South Africa's exclusive economic zone, and also a new survey vessel for hydrographic survey. Uh, this would open lots of opportunities for the local industry, uh, both construction of ships in South Africa, but the equipment of the ships with all sorts of systems uh, and uh, sensors and what have you. Uh, those are, I think, there are proposals. There's a, a project, um, not certain if it's funded yet, to upgrade the Roy Falk attack helicopter, which uh, again would uh, require new systems, be a viable stimulus. And there's a proposal to develop a brand new Roy Falk Mark, Mark II that would be manufactured. But that would need a foreign partner because the minimum number is too big for South Africa. The minimum number required to make it economically viable is too big for South Africa to do itself. There are uh, areas where the industry is doing very well. It's still very competitive. Um, there is uh, the defense electronics uh, sector uh, is proving very competitive in international markets. Um, electronic warfare sector is doing very well. The defensive aid suite uh, originally developed to protect the Roy Falk attack helicopter has won a whole string of uh, prestigious as well as valuable export orders. Uh, the defensive aid suite uh, detects uh, threats like ra uh, radar and laser detectors and deploys countermeasures like flares and what's called chaff, which will confuse and distract uh, incoming missiles. Um, and Roytech radar systems, for example, uh, developed a radar uh, that has been adopted by the Royal Norwegian Navy aboard its frigates. So there is a, a, a part of the industry is still developing new products, uh, winning international com uh, competition. Uh, hopefully, we'll see more investment locally, but <coughs> there is still challenges out there, and it's a tough environment. Thank you, Keith. That's the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching, and join us again next time for more news analysis.